Today the auditor is following audit trails to looking at how the organisation controls jigs and fixtures. Watch this video and see whether the auditor does this effectively. So I saw on the shop floor that you were setting up to run this part number 5637. So I'm interested in the measurement process okay. for that part. So I see that you've got this fixture here. Can you explain me a little bit about what this fixture's for and when this fixture is used? Yeah, absolutely. So this fixture is to hold the part in place so we can get the measurements off the CMM machine. Obviously, uh, this, this is part of an assembly so we can't get measurements on it when it's fully assembled and we have to hold it in car position. This is what this is for. Right, okay. And what is it, uh, I see here that this is owned by the customer. Correct. Can you explain to me a little bit about the calibration process for this jig? Is that your responsibility or is that the customer responsibility? So, uh, nor I or the customer does any type of calibration. This is just a holding fixture. This, this isn't doing any measurements. Right, but surely it does need to then be in your calibration system for some form of verification? No, no, because it, it just holds the part. It, it just holds the part itself. The actual measurement is done over on the CMM machine, and that is calibrated. Right, but then if we, okay, we'll come back to the calibration aspect. What about the maintenance of the, of the jig itself? Yeah, then? so every time we put a part in, before we put a part in, we check and make sure that there's no nicks or anything on these that levers that hold it in place, and there's nothing damaged on the fixture itself. Right, okay. Um, that, to me, is going to be a problem uh, in this audit because this is uh, a measurement fixture, so I do need to see records of calibration for this. So I'm going to be recording that as a non-conformity. Okay, so let's move on then to looking at now this part then being measured on the, the CMM, if Absolutely. we can follow that yeah. audit trail yeah, no through. Um, just one other thing, I see uh, on the FMEA, one of the risks that is identified is damage to jigs and fixtures. Now, albeit this is a generic FMEA, what process do you have in place to identify whether the, any of the jigs or fixtures that you use uh, in this area are damaged? Yeah, so they're all visual checks. So, like I said, we're looking, making sure that uh, on our clamps, our clamp surfaces are clean, no issues there. Um, right, and those, they engage properly. And those checks see. that are done, is there any record of those checks? Uh, it's part of their standard work instruction as they are right. uh, preparing the part in the fixture for the measurement. Right, but do they keep any records of the condition checks that they do on the jigs and fixtures? No, we don't keep any records of that. Okay, again, I'm going to be following up on that when we go back into the production area because that does give me a concern. So, let's summarise. With this video, it opens up the discussion about what is the difference between a fixture that is holding a product to enable it to be measured versus what is something that is a measurement fixture that actually would require calibration. So this is always an area of debate, but it seems that in this video that the organization was clearly stating that the purpose of this was a fixture that holds the product to enable it to be measured on the CMM. And in this case, maybe it does not require calibration but the auditor there made reference to the FMEA and the FMEA said one of the risks is damage to the fixture. So that was good use of the FMEA. The auditor followed the audit trail from that to look at how the condition of the fixture was checked and said that this was a trail that they wanted to follow to see how those checks were actually being recorded and how they were defined as part of the work instruction. So let's summarize the key learning points from this video. The first thing is auditors should be very clear when they're auditing in making sure that they understand is it a fixture they're looking at and in that case the key requirement would be uh, ATF 16949 8.5.1.6 
or indeed are we talking about a measurement fixture where calibration would be necessary. So if we don't understand that, then we could make wrong judgments about the organization compliance with the requirements of IETF 16949. So the second key learning point is that when auditors are auditing production, they should make use of the PFMEA and the control plan for verifying that the relevant controls and risks have been identified appropriately.